are you? Good, I slept. That's why I'm late. This is how we have yeah, to do this. Oh, I'm supposed to mount this now. Oh. <laughs> On the fifth anniversary, I just came down here and spent an hour by myself. Uh, with Coma, you created sculptural installations that were very interior, mm -hmm. you know, and they were within a visual um, element that you all created, and you were, you were part of the fabric of that. Um, and, and I want to say it was when 9 11 happened. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's true, but did, did that jolt you into kind of making different kinds of yeah, work? Yeah, very much so. Um, Talk as, about that. So, um, I'm not claiming I'm closer to the subject. Command I had a commissioned piece from Van, next to festival, big piece, where we are working with five African-American church singers, but not from one church. No church wanted to work with us. So we actually had individual five different singers. And we had a whole one year residency in the North Tower of the Trade Center. So that was 2000. And we performed that piece. We, we created the piece in the World Trade Center. And we performed the piece in December. So this is not during the time, any time closer to 9 11, except that it was just a one residence away. So the person who came to the residence, this was a Royal Mahatma Cultural Council, who then would rent space free to the artist, uh, free of church, um, because corporations move out and they don't want to keep the space empty, they get a tax credit. So I think she said, oh, wow, this has become quite a crowd. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> um, so this is good, because that was just a prelude. So when 9 11 happened, I saw the tower fall from my own windows, because I live on the 42nd Street, and my dining table with a window is facing south. And command my workspace the year before, or you know, half year before, was facing north on 91st floor and the north tower. So we used to kind of see each other, you know, one was there, one was there, not figures, but we fell to see each other. So I saw the whole tower fell, and for a moment I felt like. I was, I was very confused because I literally saw that two towers fell. One, the other, which you probably have seen now. And I actually saw six faces of my assistant in that morning. Mm -hmm. And those are the six assistants I was, the command I was employing for this big piece, you know. And the piece was called My Nights Were Dark. My what? When nights were dark. This is a piece we are creating in Red Center. And it's very environmental heavy. So we created this kind of cave like structure that turns, taking 90 minutes, entire turn in van. So and we created this in there. So we, we needed lots of manual labor, inexpensive manual labor. So we were getting all the all the young people from Japan who like to come to talk in New York and stay a little bit, look at around, and then work for us, so it comes even for them. So I almost felt like this very strange shudder of how no one to call their parents. And of course, that's not the case. You know, the editor, she ended in the uh, year before. But that, that kind of, oh, it's not, it was not about like, oh, I could have been there, or oh, come up with that. It really was my responsibility. I was making the judgment of applying for the, the space grant. We got it. It was Liz Thompson's time, LMCC. So of course we got it. You know, as a friend, we got it twice in the law. So it was a winning, winning the situation, right? And when you win something, you feel good about it. So I totally was dismissive of the fact Trade Center got bombed three and a half years prior to, I think it was close to five years prior to that, there was a bomb, there was a bomb in the downstairs, in the daily section, before the whole attack mm -hmm. happened. 
And I was very aware of it at that time. And I even remember 1976 when Commander came to New York, the Trade Center was there, but the downtown lower Manhattan was not as developed. So we saw the towers. And then I think I told the Commander, why do they make something like this? It looks like a memorial. And the Commander said, oh, because they want to show off the power. That's precisely it. You know, in the medieval time, church was all the highest mm -hmm. tower. You know, it's always power shows up, both with design and height, right? So we had this in instinct, which is not at all just us. I think many people used to feel that. But as I said, you get used to it. And like in your case, when we won the space grant, we become chosen. So I was embracing the opportunity. You know, it's a 24 hours access, you know, it's free, and it's kind of nice view. You know, there's a little bit of drama yeah. of winning something spectacular looking. You know, I brought my kids, I brought my mom. So I really felt why I had a very cynical, critical view to the capitalism. I've always had it. Uh, why somebody like me could so easily go into winning the game and, and, and be happy about it. You know, so that, that really shut me out. So, so, and I, I felt down. I actually lost entire my pelvis to the floor. You know, I don't know in English you say. Like, I literally lost myself and I couldn't get up. And for that sense of, oh, I am at a place where I'm making a judgment, where I am risking somebody else's life. And how little I, I knew this. This is the worst part, and this is also with the Fukushima too. The worst part is I knew the danger, but I was willing to forget about it. You know, these are the two big towers. It's a target. But none of us really thought about, you know, when you get a space grab, oh, it's a target, let's not go in. You know, you just feel, okay, it is, might be a target. But we won, you know, and let's just work, and the work is good. And I really, I really felt stupid. And I thought I, I was losing by making art and by getting commissions and winning prizes, I thought I was losing my critical sense. So, a common friend, uh, Sam Mira, I was almost like in the mode of, like, I'm, I'm like leaving. I'm just, I can't handle this. You know, I made a huge mistake. I have to regret this, all my decision making. I'm leaving. And then he said, we're too old to change what we do because we, we do have the craft, and we do have the body of work. But we can change how we do the things. That was like four days later, right? Mm -hmm. And that was just so saving, because I too was a little bit worried about if I leave the dance, what do I do, you know? <laughs> so that, I don't know if some of you are here when Commander I performed in front of the Navy store <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. And we also performed in the terminal, you know, the ship the terminal. River. Right. And the river, but the yeah. river was before that. Right, but yeah, the river was 1997, here we came later. But, but this offering piece where we performed in the shopping mall, mm -hmm. and I think we performed in the uh, second floor of the yeah. terminal, you know, like a ship oh, terminal. Right. Yeah, the, the end of the yeah. main street. Right. This was the way how we thought, this is what we do. But we change the way we do it. Presenting in some different places, you know, not just like a, a, a Joyce uh, band and, you know, kitchen. And not in darkened spaces, but no. really in lit. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, and, and be available and, and get shaken up a little bit, you know, in not secluded and not hiding ourselves. You know, when performing, even in a green theater or any theater, only the professional field people know how to find us afterwards, unless there's a reception. Right? But, but if I perform in the Navy, in front of the Navy, yeah. I can't hide myself. You know? mm -hmm. I don't know what it makes sense to you. It's the 9-11 sort of 
made me think I don't want to be that neat, <coughs> crafty artist who just present in a theater, cutting goes down. <laughs> now, now, I mean, we continued some time to make the theater pieces, but now I actually, I left it. Like with this project, I left it. Well, and, and what you've been doing recently, even in those pieces you were describing, yeah. you still control the gaze of the audience. For, for me, to, and you're still listening to stuff. And your recent work, the solo work, you you exploded the gaze of the audience because you're doing it in site specific places all over, in libraries, in train stations. In New York, you did a month of performances all over New York. And yeah. You invited the audience to journey with you, or yeah. the accidental audience came upon this yeah, yeah. strange person moving, yeah. you know. Uh, and then you also, but then you disrupted it again by doing your stuff internally at the dancer space where you crafted the installations of right. the soul. Yeah. And so it, 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 it's it, it, like another jolt happened. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, echo and coma. Mm. It's echo now doing solo work. And the coma is doing a solo work. So yes. Oh, he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he hasn't premiered it. But um, during mm. my so, what John saying was, I just finished uh, a more than one month, like a, a one month and a little bit more marathon, <laughs> where uh, every day I perform my solo in a different places. And in a different time of the day. Monday was at 9 a.m. That was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and Tuesday was noon, Wednesday was 3 p.m., and Thursday was uh, 6 p.m., and uh, Saturday was, uh, Friday was at 9. Right, so that. And then the, uh, Saturday was midnight. Mm -hmm. And then every Tuesday I had an installation for four hours that I created. And then in the middle of the installation, I invited another artist to perform within my installation. I also did a 24-hour show of photo exhibition of these photos, mm -hmm. like 178 photos of these on mm -hmm. the church, and, uh, on the floor, and on the, uh, on the risers. And we created the lighting design, and after every hour, we invited another artist to perform, to mark the time. So I had a 24-hour Amazing artists performing at every hour. This is on the fifth anniversary. Yes, that's right. 2011, March 11th. And preceding that, I organized four hours of the talk where in the three different round table, I put it two, uh, 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 no, one academic person, but proactive academic person. I call it activist scholar. And then artists together. So we had like three hours of talk. And then I performed, and then I had a 24 hour exhibition. And then uh, I also did a, every week we did a book club. Every week I had a film series to feature I invited John Karaki's piece. So mm -hmm. that, that, actually, the film series went on six weeks. So let's say six weeks of my marathon <laughs> um, had been both, I mean, this, my solo was ticketed by, you know, and people had to buy a ticket, but they don't know why I'm doing it. So they have to come at the church, 9 a.m. or midnight or whatever, and they was told, I will take you, so the dance space start with the tank. And it, this is very much, it's very cold in here, you know, especially this winter. So people had to walk there, like, like this kind of craziness get together, they become so like acquainted with each other, very social talk walking and they come to some place, they find me. So those are ticketed audience. But then that place often have other people in it, like the senior citizen center. Senior citizen center had already seniors, they're there. So then the seniors there are looking at, well, there is coming people coming in. And then the whole people coming in was like, who are those people doing something here? And they're kind of looking at each other. And then they kind of go, oh, this woman is doing something strange. Then sometimes I took the people outside to the street to finish the work. And then they also then the street people, like new people watching, then somebody is watching from the roof. So, so like I can't really screw that. You exploded the case. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you learn in this 
six months, six weeks. I have a tendency to underestimate what it takes to do something. <laughs> <laughs> no small undertaking, you try. Yeah, and uh, greater there than space said, like eight times she at least of me. This is a lot. I think we should cut down. And I got it really. Because I thought, you know, everything was good, you know, good project. On the anniversary, if I heard a young man being interviewed, and he said uh, what he'd like to do is apologize to his ancestors because he cannot return to their land. Yeah, so I, I think I needed that fear to remember, which is not a very good way. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I, I am now 64, and I was 62 when I first went. So that's, that means a lot to me. If I was 22 or even 32, this is really not good. The younger, more affect because the DNA is still developing. The kids, kids are the most affected, you know, by the radiation, okay? In my age, this is just like I'm telling myself, yeah, of course it, 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 it makes it more like, likely that I get a, a cancer. But I am also at the age where even if I don't go to Fukushima, I would get cancer in moment, right? So it's hard to know. It's, it is certainly radiation, but I, I was never there more than one week. So one week, you know, I was there, I was pretty much on the ground, my exposed skin, it's not a very good thing. But to me, my regret was so big, I kind of had to mark it. And, and I don't think what I did was suicidal, you know, it's not like I'm dancing in the plant. But we did go pretty close. I think we went to up to four miles close. Is that, is that the plant in the back there? Yeah, well, this is actually Daini. So I'm literally standing between the two plants. Daiichi is the one who had a meltdown. And Daini, of course, is not operating. But, you know, in a nuclear plant, even if we are not operating, the rod, nuclear rod is still there. You're, you're so particular in the way you have our gaze. So did you work with, um, is it William or Bill? Bill. Bill. Did you work with him to set up each shot? These action shots that he captured? I basically danced. So usually one of us suggests, oh, how about here? And then I'm like, you know, and then like, for a while later I start to dance. And then I get out of the juice and I go, is that enough? And, and then we kind of walk around again, and sometimes I start again. So, you no, know, I had absolutely no, I didn't have any suggestion. What, but he now can quite anticipate me. So, um, and of course, we shot 7,500 pictures. So, you know, even when we have 200 picture exhibition, that's really a lot of selection. So selection happens. And then, to those of you who might be interested in, if you go to my web, I have made a 52 minutes video where I assign the time for each photo, and then I create a sound. So I actually created a video that can also be seen as a, a, as a video work. So, uh, and I'm, I'm going back there. I also went with Bill to the um, Indian Point. So uh, last week, we went to Indian Point. And because now that next time I show the Fukushima work in New York, I want to juxtapose it with an uh, Indian point. You know, literally like that, so that we actually see it is the same technology. Big campaign by Japanese government moving around the campus in America, how people had to be brave, you know, all those beautified stories, right? And so I want to be there because, and I also teach. So I teach about atomic bomb. Now I don't only teach atomic bomb. I put a syllabus. I start with atomic bomb and I end with the nuclear plants. So as, as a subject of my, you know, my concern, I don't want to just shot the pictures. I have no pictures and not to return. I feel it's my morale to return. And you know, because people would ask me, now I'm showing this, we showed these uh, pictures in 12 different cities already. 
and some are like 200 pictures, like big galleries in Santiago, Chile. So then people ask me about opinions, about uh, update. So it's my obligation you know, to know a little bit about that. So that's another reason. I, you know, I, we've known each other so long and I've seen you really honor uh, some of your mentors, even if you, and whether they were even brief teachers, but you honor Kazuo Ono, of course. You honor Anna Halperin. Yeah, very much. Who, in your lineage, who's, who's following you? Like, who's, who's the next generation of Eiko Otaku? I made it very clear that I don't become someone head of the clan. You don't have that choice. Because you, you already are someone. Like Kazuo Ono was someone. But you know, Kazuo Ono also, with my all my love to him, he, he made the system. In, a, in another way, he didn't feel any strangeness no. being adored. No, he supported I make all every all effort not to be adored. No, I think I, I work very hard. Okay. Like no student of mine is, uh, is allowed to come back to study again. I kind of go, just go. And then I always say, use whatever I give you. Like tomorrow, some of you come for a workshop. I always say, I don't teach a Buddha workshop. I teach what I made up. You do whatever you want to do with it, but never credit me. So there is no lineage as a credit. I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> but as you, as you said, that's that's not your uh, Ono did kind of have the cult of personality. Yeah. So yeah. So and, and I, I Anna Halperin did too. Of course, and I adore them. But yes. I I come from a different era. I come from the different ideas. So I don't I don't you know, I, I don't I don't like this. It's my friend Liz Raman. Anything like that. <laughs> you, you also in this period in your life you've been able to catalog your work, the body of work you have made with Coma, and now the, the continuing work you made. You have a beautiful catalog uh, that the Walker put out, and that now you have this brand new catalog of your work. Um, what's that been like for you to kind of go back to these ephemeral works? Yeah, I, I, I'll talk to you, but yeah, Andrea, yeah, maybe sure. before I go there, maybe you had uh, your hands up, so I want oh, to. Oh, well, I was going to ask a question, but I don't know if you wanted to. No, no, but I remember this question, so I come oh, back. Okay. So, so I wanted to ask how, how you choose and feel about the spaces where you're dancing, like here and in New York and others, and what, is there a connection with Fukushima or some kind of consecration of space, or, or what, what is that about? So how, so I'll come back to the catalog, but, and I'll connect to that. Uh, so the places I choose are often and I did this a lot as a Econ Koma too. You know, we came here to perform in the river, you know, um, in the shopping mall. It's often it's collaboration with a presenter. Because I, you know, it's a lot of things to consider. Do you have a parking space? You know, is the people know the way it is? You know, do they feel discouraged and encouraged to come? Do I feel motivated to perform there? And then what are the rights? You know, what are the dirtiness, the cleanness, the texture? All of that goes into that, right? But I, with this project, what I like about this project is every presenter is doing something that they have not done before, one way or the other. Like this gallery is doing the photos series while I'm here as a performer, right? In American Dance Festival, I just came from that. They put me in a farmer's market and supermarket and library to perform. So it's not so much that I have a list of it has to be a library. I work with a presenter whose appetite and whose local relationship can make it possible. I performed in uh, train stations. I performed in, you know, and oh, this June I'm performing in front of the um, stock exchange. <laughs> But I, the choice yeah. were like five different places and the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council gives me the choices where they think it's feasible. So I chose the stock exchange, not because it's beautiful, not particularly motivating, but when people hear it, oh, 
Echo performed in front of the stock exchange. People know I'm not there to adore stock exchange. I'm totally anti-capital. <laughs> so there's a, you know, there's a kind of added element to that, right? So I do that. Um, I am deliberately using same costume, same props that I brought to Fukushima. And if I don't have a, a photo exhibition, I show video or I give a postcard. So I do make that people know, oh, this person. I'm, I'm not doing a Fukushima dance, by the way. But this, people know, oh, this, this person, she went to Fukushima. So in that context, people are seeing my body. In that context, people are watching my clothes, like that. So when, in some ways, they're there. I mean, in some ways, well, they're my idea is actually to connect two places. Connect. Just in, my, in, in your imagination. So I, when I teach atomic bomb, I prohibit using three words in a 13, 15 week course. And I, I censor it. And I love power to censor the people. So I prohibit interesting. <laughs> no, no person can use interesting by talking or by writing. And every, every week they write journals. Second is cool, and nobody can say cool. So the people, start, people still say, so we just like bang the floor like crazy, and the people have to restate it. And then the third one is I cannot even imagine it. I cannot even imagine. This is, yeah. So this comes out very often in a journal writing when when people are reading about nuclear plants, the people are reading about the saga of the people, you know, the uh, 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 radiation sickness. Very nice young person would say, oh, you know, I, I had a, some hard times, but nothing to compare to this. I cannot even imagine. And then I put my foot down. So you can feel that way, but do not say it. Then you are creating the distance. You, if you feel you cannot imagine, let's look for the tools so that we can imagine. Because if we can't imagine, we are dead. You know, so these are photos are for me, a little tool that I provide for the people to be able to imagine, because not too many people should go there, to, to be honest. So that when you know, people are seeing me here, I look reasonably healthy. But I also carry Fukushima with me in my mind. I decided it. I decide this is one, it's my regret that I didn't do much not to make it happen. So I carry this with me. And I have to refresh it by going back there, my upset. Um, let me say one incident before I go back to this catalog effort. So between the time I was there, the, you know, because they're dealing with this meltdown structure. So the TEPCO had decided, in order to take, really go into the core to take it out, they have to take out the outer, outer structure. But taking it out means all the things that's on it, nuclear, is going to fly out again. So they are going to put uh, a solution that will stabilize radiation, so it won't like crazy fly away again, right? They just discovered that solution was diluted by 100 times, one to 100. The solution was supposed to be used as is. And because I was there, and because I performed there, and I found out this later, my body had actually like, I had a fit, you know. Mm. Because I read about this system of like putting the solutions to stabilize it, and I felt like, oh, at the same time, if we are there doing it, then diluting it 100 times more, so it becomes effective now. But still workers are doing it, right? This is absurd. So it's like, this is like one after the other. This absurdity brings more absurdity. And the no TEPCO people are working there. It's like TEPCO's second company, third company. You, know, you hire another company. And by the time that those people come, they're like skillless. They're the kind of people I talk to with them because we stay those places those people stay. 
And those are the people who are like truck drivers who lost the driver's license. And who are the kind of people they are, right? So you know, skill is very much diluted. Everything is diluted. And so every time something happens, there's more mistakes happening. And it's one of those things like a Pandora's box. It was when this, like, nobody knows how to put it back. Nobody knows how to put it back. So that's one set of the things. And in a catalog, what I feel is with lots of photos, I'm not an intellectual choreographer, but I care certain things to the point that I shake with an anger. And I think that I care certain things hopefully comes through. The certain aesthetic choices I'm making, um, because I'm, I'm now like, I don't like to make something neat, but I don't, I don't want to make things that doesn't reflect how I feel things are so absurd. So I just had, I was just showing him some um, installation and I, I resisted to make it neat and cool. I, you know, I'm re in this, uh, and, yeah, and interesting. So I, right, so I'm trying to make it beyond interesting, beyond cool. Something is like gone wrong, something is like ruptured. Something is more jagged, you know. Something is not quite soothing, and you know because if the, if the world is, is like this, we need an art form or the the ways that addresses it, you know. But I'm still following. I'm looking for beauty. I don't know why, but I am. I'm still. We choose the photos that has a certain beauty. And I, that has been questioned in our conversations. You know, why do we make, try to make something beautiful from a disaster? Because when human beings fa fail, like um, this one, this is a uh, uh, seawall. Mm -hmm. So seawall, there are two sets of seawalls. That's how much they knew this is a dangerous area. One and two sets, and both broke, right? Inside of the, this kind of looks like human intestine. You know, I had this all of a sudden, this human feeling, intestine. you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. these spots. Yeah. And I started to feel like, you know, when things are broken, what we make start to resemble us. That's just my kind of finding. And then I find, you know, those are all part of the seawall that was broken and it was pushed. And there are certain rawness and certain beauty of the material itself. Not to say this should have happened. No, tsunami is a natural force. There is no maliciousness for tsunami. You know, tsunami does happen, probably will happen. People shouldn't be living there. People should have lived more up in the mountains if you want to avoid the tsunami. But there's a beauty of things that had been changed than the way the human being wanted it. Something came and changed it. You know, and I reacted to that. So, and again, archive-wise, so I just, we just, we just made a, a beautiful catalog. But beautiful catalog have those pictures. So that's, that's twisted. <laughs> but it's better that beautiful catalog doesn't have only beautiful pictures. You know, the beauty is twisted. Yeah? Beauty is um, challenged. Uh, that's but you know, for, for me, when March 11th was here, we, we had this installed here. And I, I came and just sat for an hour by myself in this gallery, and I came away very hopeful. Why and how? Because you, I just felt as an artist, you went there and you honored forward what, what, what had happened, and that you were not letting it disappear. And I, I felt like you gave me a future. And, and so, I, you know, I think I find these works just profoundly moving, but they're it's a desolation and stuff, but it's, it's a hope. I walk away with hope with these, 
this body of work you've, you're presenting here? You know, if I don't love this guy, I would challenge this. Uh, but because I love this man, I also also want to challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting challenged by the way, so challenge. <laughs> you know, because we need to be very careful to speak about hope. You know, you are old enough to remember, right after 9-11, the first week New Yorker, the Susan Sontag wrote a very severe piece. Does any of you remember this? Susan Sontag, Susan Sontag, Susan Sontag oh, yes. right? Basically, she wrote, you know, she spoke about wrongness of the words that had been used, you know, like a, 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 a coward. And she said, I don't support terrorism. I don't support this violence. But I challenge the definition of the coward does not apply to those people. Because those people did believe something, even though they may be brainwashed, but at least in their own individual self, and they were willing to sacrifice their life for that, which you don't call it a coward. It is a criminal act, by all means. And so she went on like this, challenging all those words, freedom, pancakes. You know, she didn't go, I mean, freedom, pancakes, it will come later. But when I read that, yeah. I felt hope. So maybe I affirm that. So what I felt hope about it is because it was such a bullshit at the time, all the retribution rhetoric. And she is actually using, she was using her very common sense analysis, this wording, it, 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 it's not articulate. It's not articulate. So hope is one of those words that could be so, you know, hiding, you know, like hiding. At the same time, if you feel like a sense of articulation could provide us looking. So what I was hoping doing this is actually that, that photo, for you to see this, it's nothing. I mean, it just looks like Wyoming or something, you know? It's no big deal, right? Wyoming. Wyoming, right? But in Japan, that overpopulated, every, every little place is being either doing something. This is crazy, right? And so, since I'm doing something here, it gives a little bit more time for people to be looking at this and not shove it off as, oh, oh, you know, oh, this is like ordinary. So then people, if I'm here, you have a little more time to be looking at the house. And then I put my foot on a room, and then all of a sudden this piano, which is upside down, you know, by the uh, nuclear, and this is three and a half years later, in Japan, everything usually gets cleaned up right away. They're very efficient, bam, bam, bam. But only because of the nuclear, they couldn't do that. Perhaps my body being there goes, oh, echo went. Oh, echo is making a certain decision to be, to be there. So you start to make a little different relationship to that. And if that what happened to you, in a way, I don't know I would call it hope or not, but at least like looking squarely. At it. But I don't know what your sense of hope was. It just scares me. You know, it scared me when my friend Eiko was going there. I yeah. was afraid. I know. And it's, so I, I am too afraid to go. And so when you did this body of work, I think it's very fierce. Um, it, it honors the past, but the fierceness gives me the present and the future that I, I'm afraid to, to, to encounter myself. I, I, I couldn't go there. You know, but at the same time, I didn't want to be seen as stupidly courageous artist. It's not good, you know, it's really not good. And also because I'm a senior member of the My Dance community, I don't want to give the message of, oh, let's create art by like doing something dangerous. You know, I'm against it. So it's a little bit of balancing act. I need to be careful. I'm an outsider there, you know. I'm, it's, it's not like I own the subject. You know, I'm just another part of the generation of the people that, that feel regret 
thing because it is our generation that have done this. Not that we did it, but we made, we were that part of that, the map, you know, and all the CEO, all those people are like my generation. So I feel like I, I pretty much continued my own commitment to this uh, anti-cooperation life, but that didn't really change. It changed my life, but didn't really change the, how the society, mm -hmm. you know, so that's we weren't very affecting. Oh. And unless we put our attention, nobody's looking at it because people tend to look where the people are. You know, the people's evacuated housing gets more attention, you know, than the land itself sometimes. But I'm also re returning to John. I don't want to be like uh, people following me, but I am very aware that I'm somebody in the dance field. Dance field is a, such a small field. You know, like everybody knows each other, right? And I, I'm not a very much a dancer, dancer, but I still, I own my field. And I own, I'm grateful for the fact that many people know me as a part of the field. So for me, like those books of Eck and Coma, you know, nice photos from the stage. That's not only all the part of who I am, you know? So doing this kind of gives me, yes, this is what I think. And then even though I don't want young people like going there tomorrow, but at least I feel like some other younger generations of dancers, dance makers, can get a sense of, oh, the dance doesn't have to be always made in a studio. You know, I don't make dance in a studio. I make dance by going to the places or meeting people. You know, the studio is like a little bit, only a small part of it, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of make it clear to me that I'm making a, and going to some places a choreography because, you know, it's about movement. I'm really interested in in that part of it. Between the, the time where you first visited and yeah. the the first time where you went with Bill, what was that what was the process what was the mental and, and the physical process like of you getting ready for this particular the the biggest thing came in as I Eric and Koma were uh, invited to perform in uh, Philadelphia train station. And that's a very big train station, 30th Street train station, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's big. Oh, you know Philadelphia, right? It was supposed to be demolished some time ago, but uh, Jackie Kennedy at the time kind of did a big movement to, uh, to save it, and now it's standing there like. And then Kumo had a, a sort of injury, and he wasn't feeling quite up to it. And, and so if it was left to both of us, we probably brought some piece that we already made and, and did that. And I felt something wrong about that. I, we, were just, we just finished our retrospective project, beautiful <laughs> catalog. I was like looking for something different. So I asked Tokoma, could I do this alone? <laughs> and he said, yes. So I went to the Philadelphia and I sat in this station, beautiful station, all marble. Supposed to be beautiful. I don't find it beautiful, but I'm supposed to say it's beautiful. <laughs> so like supposingly beautiful place and I'm sitting there and I'm like, shit, what did I do? You know, like I have no idea what to do here. They don't need me. I don't need them. End of the story. But I'm a professional and I'm of course being challenged. Then I thought, if I dig the hole, <laughs> I wish I can go to Fukushima, and I can bring Fukushima through the hole, right here. So those are the stations where I saw in 2011, where the, the stations that already, 2011, some already it was covered by, you know. So I thought, I don't want to be an immigrant artist, again from 9-11 experience, celebrating a nice commission from the museum at a very American, biggest Western architecture marble. I, I felt no shit. I didn't really write for this. 
um, I, excuse me, my language. But I, that's how I felt. You know, I felt like, no, I, I don't want to be like, oh, thank you very much. Oh, I came this far. No. So that's why I thought if I go to Fukushima and dance there and shoot me in the station where no train comes and nobody is there, it will be bringing something, that I'm bringing something worse that is different than this so-called amazing station. So that was the beginning. So I went to shoot station. There was very much clear idea of I want to go to the station and take certain dance sections and, and, and have a photographs. Once I went there and we went to those houses, all of a sudden my idea was kind of got broken. Why am I choosing to dance in a station and not other places? That's when a body in a station project changed to a body in places project. And then after that is very much that, you know, why am I not dancing here? You know, what could I do it here? So it became a continual investigation, so to speak, you know, that's a little clean words, but uh, I, have, I have since then danced with so many different places, not only Fukushima, but elsewhere. So it became my work method. I go to Hong Kong, I arrive half a year before, we look at 40 different sites, we choose site, then I start to make a score, and then I perform, I show Fukushima photos, I show Fukushima videos, People look at it, we talk about it. So that just became my mode of uh, presentation. I can't wait to see you in the Moran plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Outside the Moran plant. Outside the Moran plant. So this is, this, is a, this is a problem, you know, because I wish I can be inside, and you can go inside, but I was told I cannot use as a performance site. But I was also told you can come in to look inside before the performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wish I can bring people in because that's what the significance is. But at least people can go in before the show. Well, there's hardly a show. So I'll find out. And I'm here a few days. So the, 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 the starting tomorrow, I'm working. I'm working on this. Yeah. Do you hear any music or any, any what is going on sound-wise? Well, there's no silence, right? Like jo John Cage said. There's no such a thing as silence. So if I don't use music, I hear everything. The wind, you know, the chirping sound of this, da, da, da. I have made a commitment 2014, January. I am not using any music whatsoever, not even a creative song. I, that, that's a commitment I made. You know, I just make, once in a while you have to make certain decisions. So I made no coma, no sound, no theater. So those are the three de decisions I made. Well, any last questions for Eiko? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.